Hey, Seattle trainers. I am so excited that I figured out how to do this background. <laughs> it feels like no matter what I'm going to say is going to be super epic. <laughs> All I did was like go into Zoom settings and like upload a video from Canva. Like, but this looks great. Anyways, how are you guys doing? I hope it's amazing. Happy Wednesday, middle of the week. Uh, I know for trainers, like, you know, uh, middle of the week, end of the week, it doesn't really matter. We all just work at the same amount of time every single day, every single day, every single day, but it's okay. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about today is um, leading into the Online Personal Trainer Academy or OPTA for short, uh, which is just a easiest way to call it is like a soft skills crash course from very experienced high level trainers um, that I've been like lucky enough to, to know and kind of like watch them through their journey and just like study them of like, how are they so successful? What is it that they're doing that makes their clients stay for like two, three, four years? Like there's some, there's some people that, you know, they get a client They'll do their their 10 sessions with them or their 10 pack or their five pack or whatever. And trying to sell them on renewing their personal training is like um, very painful. Like not only do they try to nickel and dime you and pretty much like almost insult your intelligence level of like, well, I don't think you're actually worth that much. Um, but, you know, it's just like that whole the whole idea for me of like having a package that you have to sell, um, you know, every, every month or every other month is like really irritating to me, which is why I end up going with more of a subscription plan. They just kind of pay a baseline, um, every week. And then if they need a skip, let's say like they're sick, really easy to go into my software and then, um, you know, change that around and, um, make sure that they only pay for the sessions that they, um, actually do. But anyways, um, so yeah, the online personal trainer program is, is literally just for you guys. Like I've gotten so much experience in the last eight years in the industry, five years as a business owner. And I've known people that are literally in the industry for like 10 years, 20 years, 15 years doing the same exact thing. And they know, they know the ins and outs of how to be super successful um, how to make a, a livable wage, no matter, you know, like, I don't want to just like throw out six figures, right? Cause like everyone says, ah, oh, you can make six figures as a personal trainer. You can make six figures as a marketer. Like, yeah, six figures is super easy if you know the formula to apply it to. So, um, I'm going to say make a comfortable livable wage doing the thing that you love and not having it as um, a part-time job or like, you know, a volunteer work, something that you just kind of do on the side. Like if you really love personal training, if you really love fitness, dedicate the time that it deserves to make yourself a professional, make yourself an expert. And then you can actually charge more. You don't have to work as much. <laughs> it's like a, a win-win scenario, as they say. So I want to talk about the life cycle of a trainer. I don't know if you guys have really, um, gone too deep into this. Like it's, it's mostly aimed at managers of personal trainers, right? So they, they know these seven, these seven life cycles of a personal trainer, which I'm going to go over right now. Right. So first off it's, it's recruiting people either in the gym or through indeed or Facebook, wherever it is to get trainers into their gym and start working for them. Right. So um, you know, depending on, on where you're putting that, if it's through an ad, like it could cost money. A lot of times it's a lot of word of mouth of who's the good trainers out there and how can I get them to work for me? Second stage is on the job training. So you went from being recruited to being trained on your job of like, Oh, okay. I have a new job. This is super exciting. Like, all right. The squat racks are over there. Okay. And dumbbells are over there. This is the format for our, our, you know, our, our training, training class, like Zumba or uh boot camp, whatever their format of, of the typical classes in a typical gym is. Um, this is when you're going to get your, your on the job training 
for, um, as your, as a personal trainer, right? This is like probably the most, um, I don't even know how to say it, like, um, undersold part of the puzzle. And I think the problems that we have as gym owners later on trying to attract personal trainers and then realizing that there's a 90% uh, drop-off rate for personal trainers in the first year, the first year of them training. Um, I think it directly ties back to poor on the job training and then um, not telling people what your ex expectations are and kind of like leaving them wiggle room to figure it out. Um, I know I've, I've definitely made this mistake and um, it's, you know, I, I just assume like, oh, of course, you know how to do a fitness assessment. Of course, you know how to do squats and pushups and whatnot. But that's not the point of this on the job training. The point of on, on the job training is not what you're teaching them. It's how you're going to teach them. Right. So like, let's say you're a boot camp gym or you, you, uh, you run boot camp classes in, um, like in the park, right? How you talk to your clients is the number one factor <laughs> on if they stay with you or not. If you talk to them and you make them feel like, you know, they don't know anything or you, you talk to them and you make them feel like you don't know anything, <laughs> there's a problem there. So on the job training, um, I think it should go over like what types of software that you're supposed to be using, such as like Vagaro or Trainerize. Um, you know, like QuickBooks, anything, anything that is going to make it super streamlined for clients to just jump into your class, no matter what. So this leads to our third phase of the person of the, the personal trainer, which is getting new prospects for bigger gyms. This is very, this is a very broken system, right? If anyone's ever worked at lifetime, 24 hour fitness, what's one of those other ones? Um, like fitness now or something anyway, you know, those, those big, big name gyms, right? These people focus so much on prospects because like everyone says, personal training, fitness, insert industry here is a numbers game. So let's say it'll take you talking to 30 people. Um, everyone's going to tell, you no. And once you get those 30 people, the probability of somebody saying yes <laughs> increases the more that someone says no to you, right? It's like uh, asking somebody out on a date. If you just asked every single person that you came across, hey, would you go out with me? Hey, would you go out with me? Hey, would you go out with me? Um, they'd probably say no a lot of the times. Like, oh, well, no, weirdo, who are you? Like, I don't even know you. I'm just walking next to you in the sidewalk. Like, who are you? Um, but that's like a really good example of just like cold calling. You're just asking everybody. You're like, hey, will you will anyone go out with me? Anyone? No? Okay, if you want to go out with me, I'm I'm right here. They're like, we don't know who you are. <laughs> so as you go down this rabbit hole of asking people out or getting prospects, right? You don't just keep doing the same thing over and over again because nobody likes getting turned down. Getting turned down sucks. So instead of keeping on the, the same road that you're doing, you change it up and you get a new system. So now you're you're a little bit better at asking people out. Like, hey, how are you? Oh man, I really like those that uh that sweater that you have. Oh, are those new shoes? Oh, you got them from Target. Oh man, I love Target. My mom works at Target. Oh yeah, my mom, uh, you know, like it, it helps kind of break the ice. You're like, you're starting how to be a people person, how to connect to people. And then once you get their barriers down, it's way easier for someone to be like, Hey, yeah, you know what? I, I will go out with you. <laughs> I will, uh, take you up on that personal training offer. Eh, it's a free offer. I'm not really interested in personal training, but eh, you know what? We'll get there. Right. So, um, the prospect phase is so important. I think, it's a waste of time doing floor walking. That's me. Me as a per like I like to think of my my personal training as how do I want to be treated as a gym goer, as you know, like a fitness enthusiast, as a person that has never worked out before, <laughs> going into the gym and being like, ah, I, this is very overwhelming. I don't know what to do. Right? If someone just comes up to me and they're like, 
hey, get a personal training session. Like, uh, no, you may have my best interest at heart, but uh, I don't know you. Like, I feel like you're just treating me like a dollar sign because I just signed, you know, this year membership with all these extra fees and stuff that I didn't even realize was going to happen. So treating your prospects like you would treat yourself being sold to, like totally changed my, my whole marketing plan. Like, I don't like to be sold things that I am not interested in. Like if I'm in Costco and they have a free sample of salsa and I'm like, eh, I don't really like salsa. They're like, but it's free. You must try the salsa. It's like, well, I, I, I will take it. Thank you. I just, I uh, really am not interested. I'm not, I'm not the customer for the salsa, right? Like trying to push yourself of, you know, trying to convince people of why personal training is beneficial for them. If you have to convince them, I feel like they're not the wrong customer. Like they're, they're not the right customer, right? Um, when I decided to completely stop trying to, you know, dance around my own business thing and like fully put my 100% effort into my own business was when I was working at 24 Hour Fitness in San Diego. And they gave me uh, a prospect like, you know, he's, he's been in the gym for a while and, uh, you know, they really, really wanted to sell this guy personal training. They were like, he's going to be such a good sell. It's going to be amazing. And I'm like, all right, like whatever. I'm just a trainer. Like we'll go, we'll go about the day, do the thing. Right. And he was like, uh, he was an older man. I want to say maybe like 55 ish. Right. I'm just kind of guessing, but he was like a little bit older. Um, I met with him very like great guy. <laughs> However, all of his moves were pretty good. You know, like nothing really outstanding, like no muscle imbalances. Um, he didn't have any health issues. He moved really well. He, he ran all the, all the time. He had his own strength and conditioning program that he wrote down in a notebook. And, uh, you know, he told me all this stuff and I was like, so, um, I'm just curious. Why do you, why are you here today? <laughs> why are we getting a personal training session? You know, he's like, honestly, it was free. And, uh, I just said, why not? Right. Because you guys kept bugging me about it. I was like, oh, okay. Um, my own personal reference, like you seem like, you know what you're doing, unless you have any questions on trying to change up your workout style. Um, I, I don't actually recommend you have personal training. And he was like, yeah, I feel the same way. And I was like, okay <laughs> cool like we're on the same page here so you know we uh part ways he goes back to his workout and i get uh go back upstairs and my manager takes me into the office and they're like the fuck <laughs> what was that right they're like i was like oh. i told him like yeah i don't really think you need a personal training they were like close the door you know it's really gonna be like it's gonna be intense once they close the door right close the door sit down in front of me and go we're not in the the business of if somebody needs something, right? You're in the business of convincing people that they need you. And I'm going to need you to convince everyone that they need personal training. And I was like, mm, okay. And then the next week they gave me my, uh, what, what do you call that? Like your progress report or you know, like how, how you're doing as a personal trainer in, in the, the gym. Right. And they were like, Oof, your numbers aren't looking really good. Um, you know, you're really gonna have to work harder if you say that you're such a good personal trainer. And I'm like, I am a good personal trainer. I just don't bullshit people. <laughs> and so, uh, the fact that they like hardcore, uh, nailed down on sale, 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 like totally turned me off of ever wanting to work in a big gym. And I was like, you know what? The, I'm going to make my own business where I don't have to convince people that they need personal training. I know there's people out there that know personal training is beneficial and they know that going that route is going to help them better than just going to the gym themselves. Right? Like me, I've been in fitness for like what, eight years. And I still go to group classes every day because I know that I'm not going to be able to motivate myself with everything going on. Like, it's just, it's just a fact, like any of the workouts that, I tell myself like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I end up just working right through it. And that's literally the type of person that I work with is people that are too busy or um, engulfed in their work 
that if they don't have an appointment with a personal trainer to tell them to take care of themselves, they're not going to do it. Like I've had everyone from people that will work like 80 hour weeks to, you know, do like Twitch and like video game streaming and stuff um, to people that forget to eat because they're working so much. And they're like, oh, oh, it's, it's light out. I didn't go to sleep. Ah. Uh, Okay, just just one more one more line of code and I'll I'll get back. Like it's crazy. Like we get so invested in the work that we're doing that we forget to take care of ourselves and then all of a sudden we end up sick or injured or burnt out. Like any of those three can be so avoided just by working out, taking a break, getting an hour away of like, oh, okay, shake shake the cloudiness out of my head. Okay. Okay. I can I can refocus now, right? So um, kind of like went on a side tangent there, which is like, you know, just happens. It's what I do, right? <laughs> but anyway, so like using, like knowing who your market audience is to get better prospects, to do less work and sell to more high quality people. Um, I think that's like so important for uh, phase three of the the trainer, you know, life cycle, right? So next is that, next from that, you did your sales, you have your onboarding, you got recruited, right? And now you have clients. Woohoo, we have new clients. Yay. <laughs> so, um here is another factor that is always tripped up. Always, always, always tripped up. Like tell me if I'm wrong. There's like I want to say maybe a handful of gyms out there that do this correctly, right? So gym hired you. They gave you through training. They got you uh, interested in like a little bit of sales, a little bit of marketing to like get your feet wet, right? And now you have your own clients and they're like, all right, you have your own clients, go. And like, as like a baby bird that is not big enough to fly out of the nest, they throw you out of the nest and you fall and die. And they're like, oh, ah, well, just apparently they didn't want it that badly. <laughs> and it's like insulting. Like, it's not that... It it's not that you uh, don't want your new clients, right? You you love fitness. You love training. You want to get, you have all this information in your head that you just want to tell somebody, right? Like, oh, proper version of a squat. Oh man, you have uh, inactive hamstrings. You have inactive glutes. This is how you're going to, you know, balance out your, your um, gait in order to make your sciatica go away completely forever, right? Like you have all this information in your head, but- your your support team that was there that held your hand through these kind of like kind of like loosely held your hand through uh these first like three parts of this life cycle now they're just like ah well it's your it's your client take care like there's there's no oversight of um hey your your client said that they wanted to do a weight loss program um Let's go over what your ideas of weight loss program is, how we can like mix this together with maybe a different type of, of style from another trainer. Um, do you have any questions? Have you done this before? <laughs> like, like, do you like, oh man, I, why would you use a Zercher squat? I am very curious of this, like, like Zercher squat versus back squat, um, zombie squat versus regular squat. Like what type of squat do you decide on doing? Like, is it just because one day you're feeling fancy? Is it because you <laughs> like one day you're just like, ah, back squat, fine. Like there's certain reasons that you're supposed to use one over the other, obviously. Um, but like, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So um, what I did, you know, with my own personal business is um, every, every one of my clients doesn't get just one personal trainer, they get two. Oh my God, why do you get two personal trainers, right? So me, I know myself, I am more of a functional fitness, MMA style personal trainer, right? I have other trainers that literally have like bachelor degrees in exercise science and program writing. Like they're going to know and come at fitness a little bit differently than what I'm going to do. So using both of our heads together to get the client to where they need to go to, also keeping them actively engaged, also showing that you care about their fitness journey and not just like, no, this is my client. You cannot have my client, even though you may have more <laughs> education and knowledge on this particular topic, but no, I'm fine. This is mine. <laughs> like being possessive over clients. Like we will literally 
hold on for dear life to these clients, even if we know that somebody else is better for the job. Like I've, I've literally been yelled at. I have been talked to because I was like, I got a new client and they wanted to learn how to do marathon running. And I was like, um, I am a fighter. I am a Muay Thai fighter. Like I don't really do marathon running. Like, yeah, it's like a different type of endurance sport. I, I literally, I have no knowledge of this, right? Um, you should go talk to that trainer over there because they are a marathon runner. Um, them. Go talk to them, right? And again, got taken aside. <laughs> Same 24-hour fitness, right? Got taken aside and uh, close the door. Amanda, <laughs> why are you turning away clients? I'm like, I don't know anything about marathon running. I am not the trainer for this, this client. I, I literally know nothing about marathon running. And I was told straight up, well, you need to change your training style to fit your clients. And I'm like, yes, to a point. Like if I am a kickboxer and my client coming on wants to learn endurance training, I can do that. Kickboxing and endurance training goes hand in hand, right? There's running, there's similar endurance and conditioning drills you can do. Like there is a science behind building endurance, which blankets everything, right? But if I am a terrible runner and somebody comes to me at a higher level of education on how to run, asking me for expertise above their level to know how to run better, I'm not going to be the person to know that, right? Like there's literal marathon running coaches out there that will be the best fit for these people, right? Um, so I don't think it should be, trainers shouldn't be a one size fits all. Trainers should be niched, right? Like, like I said, functional, functional training, mixed martial arts. I've got another trainer who's a bodybuilder. I've got another trainer who's strictly MMA. Like MMA is different than kickboxing, which is different from Muay Thai, which is different from jujitsu, right? So like all of these different niches, very, very important to have that expertise in each one of those areas. But you can also like cross train. I'm like, oh, hey, you know, there's a, a different way that we like to do that in judo. Oh man, that's amazing. Like I didn't even know there was a thing called judo, right? Or, you know, like it's for an example, right? Um, but making sure that like the the trainer, you, the trainer is supported like a hundred percent of the way, not just through, you know, being recruited, getting job training, uh, turning you into a temporary salesperson and then just letting you go. Like once you get people go figure it out. I'm not going to do any oversight. You have any questions? Uh, look it up on YouTube. <laughs> um, but it also like having it this way, like the way that I've set it up to have two personal trainers per client. It also gives you that like connection, that community. Um, also the way that we do it is like you, you actually have teams of five, um, uh, what do you call it? Five people that work with each client. So there's two personal trainers, there's a nutritionist, there's a massage therapist, and there's a life coach. So all five of these people work with each client to make sure that their like their hand is held all along the way. Cause I've seen so many people get burnt out. So many people like, oh man, I want to learn life coach stuff. I don't, I'm not a life coach. Oh man, I want to learn nutrition. Uh, there's only so much I can tell you about nutrition legally, right? So like have a dietitian tell you more interesting stuff about like meal planning and stuff, right? Portion sizes, whatever. Um, okay. I've talked about that way too much. I want to move on. So next phase of the training cycle is, okay, you got all these new clients. Oh man, you're so excited. Don't really know what I'm doing. Kind of have some questions, but I have no one to ask. Uh, okay. The clients aren't happy because I, I, I don't know how to answer my own questions, right? I don't know how to provide them the information and the service and the quality that they're looking for. So what happens? Your retention rate starts sliding, which is very stressful having a client tell you like, hey, I just uh, don't think that the service that I'm getting is worth the money that I'm paying. You're like, 
<laughs> just like straight to the heart. Right. Um, but yeah, like this is like very much a real thing. Like people can be upfront about it of like, Hey, I'm not getting my results. Sorry. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> people can be roundabout about it. Like, mm, I think I'm going to, um, cut back to uh, three or four d- days of the week. And we're, I think I'm just going to go do yoga. And you're like, Oh, you can do whatever you want, but okay. Like I, I can read between the lines of what you're trying to say. Right. Also, uh, low retention rates makes the trainer feel like they failed. And again, they have no support. They have no one to turn to of like, okay, what was I doing wrong? Cause then you do the exact same thing that's wrong with the next one and the next one and the next one. And some people, you know, they'll stick with you because they like your personality. Right. But will they stick with you two, three, four years because they like your personality at $85 a session? It's a lot of money. Yeah. Like eventually they're going to have to come to terms with either you're a good trainer and you got them to the results or you're a so-so trainer and you kind of got them to their results and make them feel good about themselves for an hour or you're not supported at all. <laughs> um, you're still a learning trainer and they're going to just take that and they're going to use that as an excuse to never use a personal trainer again, never work out again and start living the lifestyle of Cheetos and Oreos, <laughs> which, you know, that sounds great, but you know, we know that's not the the most ideal for a uh, life of longevity, right? So low, low retention rates, unsatisfactory performance for your clients, as well as um, really like bad, horrible morale for your, your trainers. Next goes into our sixth uh, life cycle point of the trainer, which is low performance and low morale. Your trainer or your clients are saying that you're not good enough. So you start thinking that you're not good enough and you start questioning if you're even in the good, the right business. You're not making enough, enough money. So you have to start getting a side job or a regular job, as people like to say. And then now, instead of your hobby, your passion, the thing that literally used to wake you up in the morning to go and do is um, associated with failure. And because it's associated with failure, you don't want to do it anymore. There's, there's nothing driving you. You feel like you're, you've painted yourself into a corner, right? Like I really want to do training, but I have, I don't know what to do. Like I can't afford to get a mentor anymore because all of my clients left me. And I have no money. Right. Um, I, I, I don't know where to turn. Do I like, you can just go online. Like anyone can go online on YouTube and say, you can make a million dollars doing personal training. Click here, blah, 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 right? Like all those marketing people, right? And then like, they just sell you the same old BS. And it's like, I already knew all this stuff. Like, <laughs> like tell me something I'm missing, right? And really like the the piece, the vital piece that's missing is somebody observing you during your training and telling you it's wrong. I literally had a, uh, a trainer who like, very, very good trainer. I've had people tell me that he's like, oh my God, so amazing, over the top, never get rid of him, right? And then somebody was like, hey, I was just wondering if um, whenever I do virtual trainings with this person, if they could um, not, what was the word? They said like not looks or seem so like lackadaisical. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like this guy's awesome, right? Like, Like everyone raves about this dude, right? And uh, apparently what was happening was he was like um, doing virtual training sessions from his phone. And so like the literally just the angle he was holding his phone, um, it looked as if he was like lounging and chilling while he's like training this dude. Right. But it's literally just because he was like holding the phone here versus having it like at a different angle. And like no one would tell you this. No one tells you this stuff. All of a sudden you would just lose a client and you wouldn't know why. So Having that support and having, um, you know, those those assessments ideally every month, if not every quarter, um, is really going to help your performance as well as like keep you in check with yourself, right? Like you can say, like, oh yeah, best trainer ever, I'm the shit, right? Um, but if you're doing these tiny little things of like literally 
not wearing a professional shirt. You're not having the angle of your camera correct. Like not having proper lighting. Like I have, I have like a giant light behind me right now, just so you can like see me better. And there's not all these like crazy shadows, which make me look like I'm broadcasting from my basement. Right. Like tiny little things that you literally never even think of. Like this needs to be put in your on-job training, especially for this new world where we're doing virtual training. Um, but like, you have to have this given to you from your employer. Like if, if your employer isn't supp supplying how to do these things, how to do a class session, how to do a in-person training session, how to do a virtual session professionally so that you can keep your clients and that you're not wasting your time just talking to people, like getting all these sales and then you lose everybody. Like it's a waste of time. Don't do that. <laughs> so like I said, uh, life cycle section number six is you're getting low performance, your morale drops, you're not able to focus on training anymore, which equals to you just not caring anymore. I just don't care. Like, oh my God, I want to lose weight. Like, ah, uh, for what? Like you're, you're just so over it that like you literally just start looking for other jobs. And this is the thing that used to, like I said, used to wake you up in the morning. This is the thing that you're like, oh man, I'm going to be the best trainer in the world. I want to be this person. Like I want to be a, you know, like a millionaire just based off of personal training. That's never happened before. Just like I'm going to be the first person. I'm going to break the, the fit, the, the financial cycle in my family. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, like a few bad performances, you know, drops your morale and it's really hard to come back from that if you don't know where to look or who to go to, right? That's why mentors are super, super important. Which leads us to usually the last thing that happens, which is termination. Termination either from uh, your gym saying that, you know what, you're just not performing well. Uh, we don't know what's going on with you. You've completely changed. Let's just, we're going to go with this new young buck over here who's... Uh, <laughs> probably on like life cycle, uh, process number two. And you're already at seven. You're just like, ah. you're like, you don't even care. Like, yeah, well, if you don't fire me, I'm, I'm going to quit. It doesn't matter. Right. Like it, you don't have purpose of what you're doing anymore. And, you know, getting fired or losing a job, like voluntarily, no matter what, it's a big life change. And, you know, you may go to another gym. You may try to still be a personal trainer, but for the most part, like I said, 90% dropout rate for personal trainers within the first year. That's why it's so hard to find personal trainers that have been here for like 10, 15, 20 years. And usually if they have been in for that long, they're a little bit cynical. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this. I love you guys, but like um, the realness that you guys come with, like all of the weight of your words, like, ah, it's normal. Like, oh, like, ah, oh, yeah, so-and-so, so-and-so quit today and decided to um, go get a job at like a restaurant. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever, it happens. Like, so-and-so hasn't uh, achieved their goals, so they quit and they're, you know, back up. 40 pounds from when they first started working on it. Yeah. Yeah. That works. That happens all the time. Yeah. Whatever. Like yikes, yikes, dude. <laughs> like, don't you miss caring? <laughs> um, but yeah. So like once you get down to that termination cycle, it goes right back up. And there's so many areas in this list that it can be fixed. And that's ideally what I'm trying to do with this online personal training Academy is I'm trying to fix the life cycle of the trainer at every step of the way. So that way, new trainers, either, you know, you just got your certification or you've been bouncing around from gym to gym for the last five, six years. Um, you're going to feel supported. You're going to have a community that you can rely on. You even have a home base that you can train out of. I have a place down in um, Mount Lake Terrace where most of my trainers train out of in person. And then also the, the virtual sessions that they can do from their home. It has childcare. Um, so if you're a mom like me, you don't have to feel bad about bringing your children with you on a, on a personal training session, right? Like I can't tell you how many times, you know, like a babysitter falls through or I don't have enough money for babysitting. That's a thing too. Like I can't afford to pay my babysitter and train at the same time today. So I'm going to have to bring 
my daughter with me. And like the look of like, you know, your, your client opens, opens the door and like, you can see like the tally, like <laughs> in their eyes. They're like, okay, I'm going to allow you five. Like you can see it in their, in their head of like, you take, you bring your kid with me or you bring your kid with you. Like, I get it, but you only get so many free rides before they're going to start, um, looking for a different trainer, cutting back their hours, telling you that to, you should just do virtual or completely stopping training with you, which like it's, it's, it's a thing it happens and you can't blame them for it. Right. Like can't, just like they can't lay, I mean, they can blame me for bringing my kid. Right. But like, um, you know, it just shit happens. <laughs> you gotta just like that cynical old trainer shit happens and you just gotta go with it. Right. Um, but yeah, I hope this was super helpful. Um, if you want more information on how to avoid all of these pitfalls with every single step of this life cycle, um, I'm going to actually leave a link to this life cycle, like on paper, um, in the video below the, in the comments below. So, um, I'm a visual person. I was like seeing things like I like seeing lists and stuff. Um, but yeah, let me know if this is super helpful. And I'd love for you guys to join us for the online personal trainer Academy. First 14 days is free. If you sign up with this video. So, um, hit me up and let me know if you want to join in on our 14 day free thing to the personal trainer Academy. <laughs> As you can tell, I was not a singer. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just going to go now. I hope you guys liked this as much as I did. Um, I'm like really digging this background still. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go. Thanks. Bye.